old lady car. I thought you'd be in a stretch limo now you're a big deal in America. Afraid I'm not quite in that league. Is that for a week? Well, I had to pack for every eventuality, didn't I? Seeing as you refused to tell me where it is that we're going. Nice try. But as I said on the phone, it's by the sea and it's the most beautiful resort ever. Oh! Remember, this is work. You're just doing the PR for his new yes, book. Yes, 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 yes. You got a dead body in Not here? Not yet, but there is time. Yes. Oh. Mm. Yeah, I might have to take Marilyn. This is more of a city car. Good idea. But I'll drive, so it's still a surprise. I shall get the keys. See you later. See ya. Going to an airport. Oh, traveling by boats, are we? You'll see. Mm. Be there in no time. Hey, they've added full metal jacket and platoon. I'm thinking double. many times as a boy. It's gorgeous. You'll love it. I thought this book was supposed to be about the Napoleonic Wars or such like. I was rather hoping for Mauritius. Ah, yes. Yep, those islands were indeed a key part of the conflict, but Snoth has its own fascinating links. Yet not least, buried treasure. Gold brought back from Buenos Aires by Admiral Lloyd Snoth after the ill-conceived occupation of the Spanish River Plate. <laughs> Some say that there are rumours of him roaming the town in reincarnated form, guarding over his precious doubloons. Or at the very least, Belgium. Okay, so perhaps it was a mistake, even the destination is a surprise. Oh, ignore me. I'm sure the hotel is charming. Come on, let's get in. Mr. Spirit? With a freshly wet. Oh, sorry. And, uh, gross. Netflix and chill, was it? Am I really the only one who doesn't know that's what it means? Uh uh, there is someone else. No, it's just you. Are you staying the week, are you, Roy? Absolutely. Oh, I've got it. Netflix and Bill. Get dressed, put drag race on. And open a window. It absolutely stinks in here. Not what you expected, then. It just seems smaller. Not quite as glamorous as when I was here last. Smaller? Well, I suppose you are a big boy now, James. Welcome to the Palace Hotel. We would like to check in. 
I think. Of course. What name is the reservation under? James Lacey and Agatha Rayson. Uh, two rooms, please. Harry. <laughs> this is a work thing. Sure. Uh, have you stayed with us before? I have, yeah, but not for some time. I have to say the palace is looking a little more faded than last time. Right. What's with the protesters outside? Oh, that's just some locals making a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, now, I'll need a card for incidentals if that's okay. Buzzing in here. Yeah, it was touch and go if we get a table. <laughs> you look lovely. Room all right? I, uh, yes, like you, it has a certain old school charm. Glad to hear it. GNT? Always. Sure about this seafood supreme. Mm. You're playing Russian roulette there, Chelsea. One bad prawn and all bets is off. Done. <laughs> oh, excuse me. A bottle of dry white, please. It's an emergency. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe you're seafood intolerant, Ruff. Oh, don't talk nonsense, Brian. Seafood intolerant, my arse. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks that funny? Oh, it is. <laughs> I brought out goggles and welts, ate them by the bucket load. I bet you were. <laughs> Why don't you mind your own business, you stuck-up bitch? Oh, I, I would love to. So if you could stop broadcasting your entire conversation, that would be great. Agatha. Oh, where do you think you are, the Sistine Chapel? Just because you two ain't got nothing else to say to each other, don't oh. mean we don't. <laughs> I hate to inform you, but being a loudmouth and actually having something to say are two entirely different things. Agatha, just ignore her. <sighs> Not having it. Go on, Wayne. Go on, tell her. Go on, Wayne. You need to teach your missus some menace. Please go away. Come on, then, Billy Big Shot. Outside. You and me, right now. Don't be ridiculous. Fine. I'll fight you in here, then. Yeah, go yes. on. Show him, Wayne. Be right back. Oh. Come on. Oh, oh, me. oh, eating all alone now, are we? Serves you right for looking down your nose at me, you snobby cow. What exactly is your problem? And if you touch me again, you will regret it. Are you threatening me? Yes, yes, I am. So back off. Come on, then. Ooh. Ooh. Ladies, <laughs> please. This is the palace. Relax, Marcia. I'm just making a new holiday, pal. Everything's poochy. <laughs> OK. I think like this whole fighting thing isn't really your forte. <laughs> Shall we call it a night before you do yourself a serious injury? are a complete nightmare. Believe it or not, Mr and Mrs Jankers are on their honeymoon. <gasps> Hasn't stopped them from upsetting loads of other guests and the locals who use the bar, though. Well, do you know the woman personally? No. Can't you do something about them? The night they arrived, Mrs Jankers' son behaved so badly the police were called. But our local plod wouldn't get involved. Wasn't serious enough, apparently. Well, how long are they staying? Until the day after tomorrow. Oh! In the meantime, we will comp your rooms. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. Quite frankly, it's the least they could do. <sighs> Should we have dinner in town? Yes, you read my mind. Well, 
I shall wager another 60. Match. Too rich for me. Okay, so there's only a 1 in 221 chance that Royal Charlie was dealt pocket aces. So? But the odds of you guys getting three of a kind or a two pair on the river are far better. So? And I reckon Charlie's just done that. So? So I'm folding. Thank you. Could have said that sooner. Let's see you then, Roy. Hmm. Interesting. However... Hi everyone. Hey. Hey. Looking pretty even at the moment. Except for Bill. He's not much of a bluffer. I'm getting better. Read my face. Grab a seat. Join the game. Ah, no. I uh, can't play for ages. I came to speak to Roy about the Cotswolds Clean Rivers crowdfunder. Much money coming in? Barely a trickle. I need your media savvy to give it a boost. Consider it done. Oh, come on, Sarah. Live a little. We could do with another honest face at the table. But if I join now, I'll mess up your game. Oh, it's only for fun, but be warned, Tony has learnt all the poker stats before we even started. And she's learnt them verbatim. OK. But I can't stay too long. I've got an early service in the morning. Newbie deals. I played a few hands at uni. Talk strategies for the new book. Stage one. How you research. Or we could just have a nice dinner. The two of us. No work. Crowdfunder. Yeah. Problem solved. Ship you off to Vegas and ka -ching. I can't play for real money. The big man works in mysterious ways. Maybe he'd be cool UK with it. I suppose hitting the high stakes poker tables at Caesar's Palace would speed up the process. Mm -hmm. Or, if you'd rather not fly, you could always come to my club in London, help a few chinless wonders fritter away their inheritance. That is a very kind offer, Charles, but I don't think my boss would approve. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Beauty before brawn. Flatterer. <laughs> I'm glad I skipped those trouble gooped up fat chips now. <laughs> Why? They'd have brought us closer together. <laughs> that your old man down here? No. Oh, not too late, then, eh? Listen, oh. oh. <laughs> oh I've got to go. Mm, me too. Yeah, maybe I'll see you around. Enjoyed the prawn cocktail. Nope. And not even in an ironic way. <laughs> oh, Ooh, my scarf. I think I must have dropped it somewhere. Any idea where? Well, I did leave the hotel dining room in rather a rush, so it could be. I'll go and check. Oh, no, no, no. You might bump into that awful family again, even more drunk and looking for trouble. Okay. Just leave it till the morning. Probably wise.
So, what's on the agenda for tomorrow, then? Oh, right, yeah, the agenda. Um, well, Snoth Castle Ruins, where I believe the doubloons are buried. <laughs> Good optics for the PR release. I'll get some action shots of you. Dink, dink. <laughs> you do dig, do you? What? Mm. Night, night, then. Night. Oh, sugar. Much simpler if ruins had a postcode. Or we could use a sat nav. Yeah. I think. Taser, taser, taser! Detective Inspector Barrett, Snoth CID. Step away from the map. I won't ask nicely again. What the hell is going on here? Which one are you? Is Agatha Raisin? Well, that'd be me. Really? No, not really. Then we need a tete-a-tete. -tete. Oh, a tete-a-tete? -tete. Au sujet de quoi? À propos de quoi? Sur quoi? What? About what? The murder of Geraldine Jankers. Recognise this scarf, Mrs. Raisin? Yes. It's mine. I lost it. How convenient. When was that? Yesterday evening. What is it doing in an evidence bag, Inspector? Mrs. Janker's body was found on the beach. Strangled with the scarf you've just identified as yours. Well, I'd imagine it's the most stylish thing she's ever had around her neck. Though, I'm sure anyone could have strangled her with it. But only you were heard threatening the victim with violence. In the dining room of this hotel, shortly before her murder. It's a door case, isn't it? What? Open and shut. <laughs> Come on, then. Where were you between midnight and 4 a.m.? Asleep in my room. And can your husband slash lover slash whatever confirm this? My slash colleague, James Lacey, walked me to my room at about 11.30. And after that? No alibi for the rest of the night? No, no. Right. You're under arrest, which means we're going to Dingbridge. What? Why Dingbridge? Because since Division closed ourselves in Snoth, that's where we take our suspects. But I'm fine with it. I see. And is it far? About 30 minutes, depending on traffic. 
And if there's roadworks, which there are, especially on a cobbly bypass, you can't even go down the high street. You said her body was found on the beach. Well, I only ever met the woman once, very briefly, and we took an instant dislike to each other. Your point is? My point is, Inspector, how, pray tell, could I have persuaded Mrs. Jankers to take a walk with me on the beach in the middle of the night? Hmm? Well, I'm assuming that none of her family mentioned that she was off for a moonlit stroll along the sands. Inspector, I happen to run a highly respected detective agency, and in my professional opinion, this case is anything but open and shut. Now, I don't think either of us want to go all the way to Dingbridge, only to have to turn around and come all the way back. <sighs> think of the traffic. Oof. Think of the roadworks. OK. Further inquiries will be made. But you're technically on police bail. Understood? Understood. And don't even dream about leaving my town. Why would I? when I have a murder to investigate. What was she doing down here, James? Meeting someone? Lover, perhaps. What? On our honeymoon? Mrs. Jankis didn't strike me as a sentimental sort. True. <clears throat> right. Who are you calling? Tony. I think we need new faces to get cosy with the deceased's family. Wriggle in and see what they can find out about them. An undercover operation. Exactly. Running alongside my investigation. But if you want to focus on your book... No, 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 no. I, I can help you during the day and then write at night. Be just like old times. I was rather hoping you were going to say that. It's when we were at our best, James. Working on a case together. What's in your homes? I rather like that. Oh. I guess she left through another door then. She sounds accurate. We should go to reception and see who's on duty after midnight. Why don't I go and have a scout around, see how many other exits there are? Good idea. I'm sorry, Mrs. Raisin. There's so much going on because of the um, tragic death. Mm -hmm. and, but I'm glad you're here. You are? Oh, definitely. The police mentioned that you run a detective agency. Indeed I do. You knew Geraldine, didn't you, Marcia? Yes. Geraldine was an old friend. So why did you deny it when I asked you before? Because she called me out of the blue, wanting mates' rates. And this idiot agreed, and, well, you saw how they behaved. I did. I was worried the hotel's owners would find out that I'd given them a deal and blame me for the trouble they were causing. The hotel's owners want me to hire you to find out who killed her. Why not just let the police deal with it? They're keen to get out ahead of the investigation to see if there are any liability issues that might affect a sale to Crescendo Casinos. Oh, I see. Right. Well, I'll get my office to whiz a contract over. But firstly, I need a list of all the guests that are staying here and who was on duty last night. be wearing it on a charity run. I thought I'd better try it on the treadmill. I'm going to tell Jim first, see if I overheat. Terrible, this business with Mrs. Jankers. Oh, yeah. I was the one who found her. She was lying there, scarf flapping in the wind. It was... What time was that? Just after six. I was on my morning run. Were you on reception last night? Uh-huh. Did you see her leave the hotel? No, but from one until about five, I was 
sleep in the back office. Enjoy your picnic. <laughs> Is that man a guest? No, he just uses the hotel chip. Often? Whenever he wants. Mr. Miller's friendly with the hotel's owners. He's in and out day and night. Ignoring me, are you? Oh, no, I was on the fa Hey, people are talking. Eh? Let them! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Agatha. Oh, Terry Miller. So, you enjoying your stay at the palace? Well, it's been a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Yeah, I'm not surprised. You're more of a rodeo drive than stuff on sea, eh? Oh, really? You think so? Yeah. <laughs> you should come back in a couple of years, you know, when the casino's open. Now that. That'll be your scene. Oh, so you're in favour of turning this place into a little piece of Vegas, are you? Oh, yeah. Seeing as my firm's doing all the building work on the project. Oh. Oh. Trouble? Should I be worried? No, no, it's... <laughs> no, it's Mum. It's the name that she used to get. It just stuck, that's all, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Might this murder just pull things up a bit? I don't see why. Well, as long as Friday's casino night goes as planned, then we're in business. You should come along, see Snoth's future. Mm. <laughs> you can, oh. oh, it's architect. <laughs> Is it a house that I'm converting? Asking me where am I? Oh. <laughs> well, consider yourself invited. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> They're still in there. Harry Bean said that he locked the beach door at 11 p.m. as usual. He also said that there were alarms and all of the fire exits, so that if she left by one of them, he didn't know about it. So the deceased must have walked out through the main entrance. And off to meet her fate. You have now the uniform. I certainly have. <clears throat> right. I think we should go and have a talk with Brian Jackers. Husband. He was on the terrace not long ago. Service! <coughs> You're gross, Roy. We're just getting into character. Right. <clears throat> As my accent. Very good. Wait, are we doing accents? All right, mate. Not exactly Magaluf, is it? I'll say. No phone parties, then? Phone parties? The bar shuts at half ten unless you kick off about it. You're having a laugh. Here, yeah, mate. I'll have a part of Cronenberg, yeah? Large Chardonnay. Whoever this fellow and his missus is drinking. That's decent of you, mate, but we'll get our own. I insist. Just came in some serious Emperor Ming. Oi, Cyclops, pack out of cheese and onion as well, yeah? Nice. Agatha Raisin, private detective. The hotel have asked my associate, Mr. Lacey, and myself to investigate what happened to your wife, Mr. Jankers. You're the woman that threatened her. That was all a bit of a misunderstanding. And a momentary loss of my own dignity. Stay away from me. Agatha. Maybe he 
you some more time. It's been like one of those nightmare holiday shows. Murdered on the beach. It's hard to believe it could happen to Mum. And now the Bozzers want us to stay on at the hotel till it's further investigated or something. That's just taking the piss. All I want is to go home. Of course you do, Wayne. Can never trust the filth, right? Mm. Bottoms up. I mean, cheers. So you and his mum close then? Are you joking? Geraldine was a manipulative old tart. <laughs> she had Wayne wrapped around her little finger. Just like all the other men in her life. Really? Mm-hmm. Must be awful for Wayne, though. No? Losing his mum at that age? Yeah. Poor Wayne. Why here? Not another fond memory, is it? No. Don't want to blow their cover. Stay away from the hotel. Oh, this be a proper tradition. Punch and Judy by the seaside. Bring it on! Oh, boy. You smell like a brewery. Quite a heavy oh. session. They can really knock it back. So what do you like? Well, for starters, Geraldine Junkers has been married four times. Good God. Hard enough to believe she could get one man to pop the question. Well, her first, Wayne's father, was killed 20 years ago after a calibration error at a canning factory caused an explosion. She divorced husband too, Ronnie Black, after he was sent to prison. Oh, prison? No, that's interesting. And then there was a short marriage to an Archie... Uh, sh uh, Swale. Swale. Archie Swale. Who she traded in for Brian Jankers a couple of months ago after they met online. It's a bit of a whirlwind romance, then. Here we go, here we go. Oh, here boy! We... You don't need to stay in character. Look around. There's no one here. Sorry, I went a bit method. According to Wayne, the penultimate hubby, Archie Swale, took the breakup particularly badly, and he only lives about 15 miles up the coast in Mudhaven. Well, does anyone know what this Ronnie Black did? Why he was in prison? I mean, is he still serving time? I don't know. I don't know. Right, I phoned Bill. Our new mates have invited us to join them and Brian Jankers for dinner. Right, come on. Action stations. <laughs> now, I need you two to talk to Brian, see what you can find out about his wife and her final night. Right, come along. What are you doing? That way. Go, go. sure about this? Yes, absolutely. Listen, we'll be back in Snoth before anyone's noticed we've gone. Mr. Archie Swale? Yes. What is it? We've been asked to investigate the death of your ex-wife. Geraldine? Well, that's got nothing to do with me. Oh, we just want to know what kind of person she was. That's all. Oh, hey. Oh. Bad hip. Shocking. Waiting for a new one. <laughs> Take a seat. Thank you. So, where did you two meet? On the train. Geraldine sat next to me. She was friendly, she seemed kind. And I fell for her. As soon as we were married, she changed. I never met that son of hers, not until the wedding day. But within weeks, he was living with us. Not what you had in mind? No. And then Wayne stole a gold light that belonged to my father, plus some other valuable things. Geraldine refused to believe it. Should have heard a scream at me for accusing her precious boy. 
She gave Wayne everything, spoiled him, but it was never enough. That little shower probably did her in. And how did you feel when she left? Honestly, relieved. Did she ever talk about her second husband, Ronnie Black? Never. Actually, no. Once. When she was drunk, New Year's Eve, as we walked past some very expensive-looking Bond Street jeweller. Can you remember what she said? Well, something about the store being right up her ex-husband's street. Oh. Well, what do you think she meant by that? Well, he was rich, bought his shiny things. She loved money. Ah. So, Geraldine never mentioned to you that Ronnie Black had been in prison then? No. But well, that doesn't surprise me. Is that your Distinguished Service Medal? Which brigade? Raw Marines. I think we can safely eliminate him from the list. There is absolutely no way that he could have strangled that tough old boot. What about that bad hip and her vigor? Don't be so sure. Once a commando, always a commando. They're lethal. Even with a dodgy hip. I made it clear as crystal meth that you were not to leave town whilst you remained a suspect. Isn't crystal meth cloudy? What makes you think that she did? We had a call from a Mr. Archie Swale, checking that you were who you said you were. So. You've gone and broken the conditions of your police bail. Well, I thought I was only technically on bail. Then you'll only technically be fitted with this little beauty. Janet? You seriously don't expect me to wear that hideous looking thing, do you? That's the chavnav or the chokey. Your choice. All right. Get on with it then. Oh. An actual sadist designed this in order to be as uncomfortable as possible. Keys to our best suite, yet another cancelled booking. Figure it'll make a good centre of operations for you to work out of. Thanks. That'll help. We've got the ball started it, really. Well, turning footballers into models and... How's your food, Mr Jankers? Beckham's got a lot to answer for. He was fit, though. As in, like, you know, athletic. I love your necklace, Chelsea. It's, it's, it's well bling. Oh, hi, Nick. <laughs> Wayne just gave it to me. <coughs> but obviously, it's just a costume. Got things to take care of. You coming, Brian? I think I'll stay for pudding. See you later, mate. In a big geezer. What do you do for a living, then, Brian? I own a small chain of dress shops. Oh. Did your wife run them with you? <laughs> No, oh, but, um, I think the shops were one of the reasons she was attracted to me. She's very fashion conscious. Nice. It's my fault, you know. If I hadn't have taken that sleeping pill, I'd have heard Geraldine go out, you know. Might have even been able to stop her. Don't be so hard on yourself. Where do you think she was going that night? I've been asking myself that, love. It's a mystery. What will you do now? Go back to work once the police let us leave. Not tempted to take some time off? Can't afford it, lad. The wedding and the honeymoon weren't cheap. On top of that, I promised Geraldine I'd pay Wayne and Chelsea's bill. <laughs> Even after inheriting his mother's estate, I bet he won't chip in. So, 
Brian Jankers wasn't happy about Wayne inheriting, which makes me think there might be a decent amount. Oh, do you think Wayne might tell you how much? Doubt it. I think I've blown my cover, and not in a good way. Well, comments like that get you blown in the first place, so to speak. If only it was that easy. Uh, hang on, he did say something in the bar about coming into some serious Emperor Ming. Ming. Bling! Oh, did he know? Wayne got super edgy when I complimented Chelsea's necklace. Yeah, and she made a big deal about it being costume jewellery, but the way those diamonds sparkled makes me think they're pretty legit. And I can't help but wonder why she'd lie. Do you remember what Archie Swell said about his ex-wife outside the jewellery shop on New Year's Eve? Maybe Ronnie Black is a thief. The smash and grab kind. Maybe it's all connected. Hey, you. Hey. Are you all right? Oh, hi, everyone. Sorry. Just, uh, the dog's really sick. The dog? Bill, have you heard anything back from the prison service about Ronnie Black? Not yet. I looked him up on the PNC like you asked. Turns out Mr Black went down for armed robbery. Did he stick up a jewellery store? Yeah. Carter's to Chiswick in 2010. I don't suppose you know if any of this jewellery was ever recovered, do you? Hold on a minute. Is that my naked man statue? Yeah, I do, and it wasn't. And Are you in my house, Bill? Oh, uh, the Wi-Fi signal's cut. Bill! Cut, cut. Dropping. Sorry, Agatha. Bye. <sighs> Come on, Bluey. What if Geraldine was holding on to the jewellery for her jailbird ex? Or simply knew its location and that was what got her killed? Yeah, but Chelsea let slip that Wayne had only just given her the necklace. Maybe the necklace was one of the stolen pieces. Oh, I'd like to see this necklace. Oh, I doubt Wayne's going to let her wear that out in public for a while. Mm-mm. So, we break into their room and photograph the necklace and any other jewellery, then check to see if it matches with what's been stolen. An operation like that would need to be planned with military precision. Roy, get the floor plan. Oh, we could do it when Wayne and Chelsea go down for breakfast, because it'd be easy to keep an eye on them. Good idea. Pick your poison. Agatha, you cover the lobby stairs. I'll watch the dining room. Tony, find a cleaner with a master key. Roy, runs interference. Chelsea's cookies and Wayne's nuts. I see you've fixed the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So the prison service got back to me. While serving his original sentence, Ronnie Black brutally attacked two inmates, causing them serious injuries. But then, a fortnight ago, he was released years earlier than planned due to a terminal illness. Bill, I have to go. Oh, it's okay. Sorry, I was just a bit peckish. Right, we won't have long until she finishes the room and notices it's missing. Roy's gonna distract her once she's done. Try and buy her some more time.
Queen's on his way back up. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. Run, run. Creepy old hotels. I'm pretty sure the rule is we do. Agatha. She's here. 